Today, I will show you how to run AI models locally with Jan AI and how to install Quen and DeepSeek AI or any other models you find on Hugging Face. This way, you can have a free version of a chat model similar to ChatGPT to experiment with. The better your computer, the larger and more advanced models you can run. You can go to a website called Jan AI. This is an open source chat GPT alternative that runs offline. If you go to the documentation, you can read more information about it. I suggest reading it to get more details on what it does. It allows you to download popular models. And if you go to the installation section, you can choose your operating system. I have Windows. You can see the requirements for CPU and memory as well as for the GPU. The more video memory you have, the larger models you can load. You'll also need some free space on your drive. Let's go back to the main page where you'll see a download button. Click on it and save it to your computer. Wait until the download finishes. Then double click the executable file to run the installer. It will start installing what's needed and a window running the program will appear. I'll enlarge the window so you can see it better. Right now, it doesn't have any models installed. You can search here or download one of the suggested models, or you can go to this menu that says Hub, and at the top, you can paste a link to a model from Hugging Face. Just make sure it's a GGF model. But for now, let's pick one from the suggested models. There are quite a few, and if a model is too large, it will say that it will be slow on your device. Even though I have an RTX 4090 and 120 GB of system RAM, this one looks interesting for programmers and is quite small. There's another one that's double the size and smarter. Maybe I'll install that later. But for now, let me download the Q4 version. If you click on this arrow, you can find more information about the model to check what it's good for before you download it. This one is good for code generation and reasoning. You can see 7B, which refers to the number of parameters, in this case, 7 billion. The bigger the number, the smarter the model. Also, there are Q4 and Q8, which refer to the quantization level. AI models can be quantized to reduce their size and computational demands. Q8 usually takes more memory to run than Q4, but it is also smarter. Here, you have settings that give you a few options. You can see all the models once you have them installed, or you can add APIs for different models. For example, if you have a ChatGPT API, you can add it here. Just click the plus sign and paste your key. In the preferences, you can change the theme to light or dark and adjust the chat width. Here, you have keyboard shortcuts, privacy settings, and the logs. In advanced settings, you can enable experimental features. With this enabled, you can also attach images or documents to the chat. You can see more information about your video card and where it saves all the models and settings. There are also extra extensions you can enable if you have an API. Explore these settings to see if you can find something useful. Let's go back to the hub. The model is still downloading. Once it's downloaded, you'll see that the download button has turned into a use button. If I click on it, it will open a new chat with that model. So. If you're here on the hub, you can also click on this thread button to open a new thread. And when you want to create a new chat, you have this button here. Now it says, ask me anything. And under that, you'll see the name of the model. You can click on this button for more options. There's an assistant tab where you can give it custom instructions and adjust more advanced settings for the model, like inference settings, temperature, and so on. I'm not that advanced. I'm just a designer who uses these tools to make my job easier. Let's put it to the test. If I ask, what can you do? The first time it loads the model, and after that, it will generate a response. If you have more memory, it will be faster. If not, it will be slower. Keep in mind that not all answers are accurate, just like with ChatGPT. In this case, it responded that it was created by OpenAI when in fact, it was created by Alibaba, a Chinese company. But besides that, it can do various things. Since this model is more suited for code, let's ask it to create an HTML page with my channel name in purple glowing color on a dark gray background. It gave me the code for it along with instructions on how to use it. Now I can click on this button to copy the code, then open notepad and paste the code there. After that, I choose save as, change the type to all files, name it something like index and give it the HTML extension, then I save it. 
Now I go to the folder where I saved the file and open the HTML page. It displayed correctly, but the color doesn't have enough contrast. So I asked it to make the text float up and down, make the purple color brighter, like neon, use a dark black background, and add video tutorials in white text underneath. It gave me the updated code with all the changes. I copied the new code, edited the existing file, replaced it with the new code, saved it, and tested it again. Look at that, it works. Of course, these are simple codes, but they can still be useful. Let's create a new thread and see if it can answer other questions that aren't related to code. So I asked it to give me a stable diffusion prompt for a cute cartoon bunny in a magical forest. And it gave me a nice prompt, but I didn't like that it included quotes at the beginning and end, so I asked it to provide the prompt without the quotes and make it more detailed. Look at that, a nice detailed prompt perfect for models like Flux. You can select only a portion if you want and copy it, but there's also a copy button to copy the entire prompt. Let's test it. For example, we can test the Flux model a few times for free on this page from Hugging Face. I just paste the prompt here and run it. You need to wait for it to be generated, and at the end, you get this result. It's quite good for generating prompts, it seems. On my main channel called Pixaroma, I also have tutorials on how to generate images for free using Comfy UI. I have this series where I do an episode each week, and you can learn all about it. So, for example, I can open a Flux Dev workflow from episode 10 and paste the prompt here. Then I run the workflow. Now, the problem is that my GPU is at maximum capacity, so it will be very slow or might get stuck since I've loaded the large flux models into memory, as well as the Quen model, which is also pretty large. So it's too much. One solution is to generate a few prompts, then close Jan AI so it unloads the models from memory. And as soon as I close it, look at the video RAM. It starts going down. Now, it can generate faster, and I got this cute cartoon bunny locally for free. I recommend either running Comfy UI or running Jan AI, but not both at the same time because it uses too much memory. You could use smaller models, but they're not as smart. You can collapse the left sidebar from here if you want, and you can do the same for the right sidebar. Let's create a new thread, and let's say for this thread, I only want to get prompts. I can go to the assistant, and in the instructions, I can tell it how to act. I can instruct it like a prompt engineer, asking for detailed prompts on a subject I give with no quotes, just the prompt. Now I just go and type something like a cartoon cat in a cave and it knows to give me only that prompt. You could also save these instructions to use for new threads if you want. Let's type something else like a dog in a car and I get this nice long prompt. Pretty cool, right? Let's go to the hub again. You can use this search bar if you know what you're looking for or just click on the arrow to read what each model does and see if it fits what you have in mind. I'll install a few more models later to see how they work. If you want to try models from the internet, as long as they are GGUF models, you can give them a try. For example, I found this uh, DeepSeek model on this page. Um, all you need to do is copy the link and then paste it here where it says search or paste hugging face link. As soon as you paste it, this window will appear from where you can choose which model to download. Let's say I get the latest model, the Q8 version. After I click download, you can see how much has downloaded from that model at the bottom. From here, you can sort it to show only the downloaded models. So far, I only have one here, and you can see the size here. The rest of the models are for those with an API key. As you can see, if I try to test one of those that isn't downloaded, it says I need the API key. So only the models downloaded to my computer can be used without the key. Let's create a new thread, and now that we've installed the extra model, DeepSeek, we can select it from the list. These are models saved on the device. If you're using a cloud model, you can select it from here if you've added the API key. So let's select the DeepSeek model, and if I ask it what it can do, it gives me a very long answer. It seems to think a lot, almost like it asks itself what to do, and then responds. Now, keep in mind that some models are smarter or less capable, depending on what they've been trained on. Some are better at coding, some are better at chatting, others at math, and so on. If you go to Settings and then to My Models, 
you can see the models installed. If you click on the three dots, you can delete a model, but if you want, you can also go to the advanced settings where you'll find the data folder. If I click on it, it shows me where all the models and data are saved. For example, I have a Hugging Face folder because I downloaded a model from Hugging Face. But yours might be different if you have a different model. Then under Unsloth, I have this DeepSeq model I downloaded. I can delete that folder or even this folder since it's the only model in it. It says I can't delete it because it's open by another program. So I go back to Jan and close it. Now, if I try again, it lets me delete it. So when I open Jan again, you can see that the model has disappeared from the list. I've installed a few more models. If I sort by downloaded, you can see here that I have installed some bigger and smarter ones, even though they are slower. Let's take an example. This one is good for role playing and has a human like behavior. So if I go to chat and test it, for example, I asked it to talk like a pirate and I can have a conversation with it and it sounds like a pirate. You can ask it to act like anyone or behave how you want. Then I installed another one that says it's similar to earlier versions of ChatGPT. I tested it here with a tricky question and it knew the answer. So it's somewhat similar to GPT 3.5. I did another test here with a prompt and it gave me a nice prompt as well. Then I installed some large models like Quinn and DeepSeek with 32, 33 billion parameters. Most of these are made for coding. So I asked it to give me HTML code for a black page with a white square that completes a full rotation every five seconds. And inside the square, there's a purple round ball that bounces according to gravity rules. For this one, I'm not sure why, but it renamed my thread in Chinese. I'm not sure if it's a model bug or something with the chat, but it only happened once. I took the code that it gave me and tested it with different models. I only asked once for each model, and I will show you the results here. I'm sure if you follow up with more questions, you can make it work for some models. The first test was with DeepSeek Coder 33B, and it was quite slow, so I had big expectations from it. First, it told me that it couldn't do everything in HTML and that I needed CSS and JavaScript. I added that, but when I tested it, the result was blank, so it was a total fail. Then I tested another big one, Find 34 b This model did some animation, but it was more like a rotating coin, not what I asked for. Next, I tested Code Strawl 22 b This one got a little better, but the ball wasn't moving inside the square. Then I tested Quen 2.57b, and I got two circles instead of what I was looking for. I decided to test some bigger models like Quen 2.532b. Finally, this one was the closest to what I asked for, except the ball's gravity stayed on one side of the square. Then I tested GPTO 3 Mini, which is quite popular, and I got a result similar to the previous one. So these two models gave me the best results so far, but that was just for this case. So it depends on what you're testing. I also tested something more complex with this model, including a title, text, and a button, all with colors. And when I pressed the button, something would change. I was surprised that it knew how to make it all work with a single HTML file instead of asking to create extra scripts. From the first try, I got almost everything I wanted, except I would prefer the text and button not to be so close to the edge. I also wanted the poem to disappear when I pressed the button and for goodbye to appear. I asked the model to adjust it with those instructions, and of course, it updated the code. Now, when I test it, the title flickers like I asked, and the layout is better arranged. When I click quit, the poem disappears and goodbye appears. It would need another round to add some space between the title and goodbye, but as you can see, it can be quite useful. The point is, the more accurate and detailed instructions you give, the better the chances for good results, but don't expect it to work perfectly the first time. You'll need to test, come back, and ask for changes, so there's still some work involved. Depending on the model, some are quite good, but you will need a cloud for huge models to run. So download and test a few. It's free, and see if you can use them to save some dollars. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and a comment if you found something useful. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.